Hi, John here again. I'm just continuing on part two of this video. Um, <clears throat> um, we got up to this part here. The Dutch government to the English Secretary of State for Foreign Affairs and a curious correspondent ensued. The Crown lawyers declared the purchase of the Chatham Islands by New Zealand Company illegal and the directors were threatened with the loss of their charter for interfering with the royal prerogative straight to England under the Manukau title that I'm talking about. Okay? The end of it was that the bargain between Mr. Syndicus Skeeving on one part and New Zealand Company on the, on the other fell to the ground and the Chatham Islands were declared a dependency of New Zealand. That means the British took it over and made it into one title in New Zealand under the Manukau title. Okay? Under the Manukau title. Hitherto, New Zealand was attached to New South Wales, but when the New Zealand Company obtained a royal charter, it was proclaimed an independent colony, and the announcement of this produced much joy amongst the settlers. The town of Kororareka was illuminated, and addresses were presented to Captain Hobson, who appointed Governor-General, Governor and Commander-in-Chief in the islands, right? So that's just showing you that once it became British direct, then everything started to kick in. Only all that has passed before that was illegal. And I'm saying we're jumping back into that position with this flag back in 1831 and 1833 and 1834. Tikitiki 1831, birth certificates as title to the land, a native title to the land with the St. Mary's Church in Tikitiki. Then this 1834 flag, or then the 1833, Captain, um, 1833, King William IV acknowledged King, uh, Captain James Cook founded New Zealand. In, uh, 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 he announced that in 1833 and 1834 gave this flag as the founding document direct to Britain. Okay, so that was the end of any other contract after that is subject to this flag straight to Britain. <clears throat> we have the right to seize everything back now on that basis. I'll just do this on Her Majesty and a legislative, count, a legislative council composed of the above officers and the three senior justices of peace magistrate were commissioned, a chief justice and an attorney general. Attorney general was created and the colony was constituted a bishop see. That means the church, <coughs> the St. Mary's Church in Tiki Tiki. The bishop see, That's, that means the church outside the church in England in 1831 created the native title on my Wanoa land blocks in Tiki Tiki, Rahui Marai and Bishop Wanoa Bishop Ka, C-A-R-R -A, and Whakawhitira native court in Tiki Tiki to Ruatoria on the way there and Mount Hikurangi, our, <coughs> our Munga to the area. Okay, so that's our manga in our area. The first meeting on newly created legislative account was held at Auckland. This is Auckland on the Manukau title from Kororareka, came to Auckland, 1841, under that Manukau title in Edinburgh, Scotland. It was opened by Governor Hobson with a short address and several ordinances were passed. It is hardly necessary to mark this council, that this council was a mockery of freedom. So we go through here, I've only marked here, late in the year 1841, 27 settlers from Great Britain arrived in the Manukau Harbour. This is a large estuary on the west coast of North Island, exactly opposite Auckland Harbour, and only six miles distant. These colonists were sent out by a Scotch colonization company which claimed 19,000 acres of land purchased from the natives in 1835 by Mr. Mitchell. There's your, your, your ancestor Alfred Mitchell and resold in 1839 to Major Campbell, Mr. Roy and Captain Simons. <coughs> Roy is a Roy and, Roy and White lawyers in um, 
Edinburgh, Scotland, where this Te Rewakato Wharaherehere Manukau title was put together with that paramount chief there, straight here, on their Manukau lands, at the Manukau heads. This is the one that your ancestor, Alfred, was there to sell the land before 1840, right? Your ancestor sold the land without any authority in 1839. Bought it, you bought it, and then sold it. You held on to it for four years, waiting for something to happen before you flicked it. You flicked it to Major Campbell, that's John Logan Campbell on top of the One Tree Hill. You see, you see how I'm telling you the story, the real story, Alfred and and um, uh, Nelson Painter. I'm I'm telling you the real story. You can put all your books away, all, all your documents away because they're useless in front of this Manukau title. Because we're going to seize the whole lot back into the new world order under this flag, straight to the world court. And anybody that plays around in front of me now and these paramount chiefs, you'll get thrown into that court over there, and you've got to pay your own way to get there. Otherwise, shut your mouth, because. You haven't got this title that I'm talking about. The settlers on this um, embarkation squatted on the ground. Squatted, right? You, you, they squatted on the ground, but as the company could not establish their right of purchase, no more immigrants were sent out, and the settlement never took root. Those already in the colony were given lands in their localities, and after 12 years' correspondence, the colonial government reported that the Manukau Company, right, the Manukau Company, that's in Edinburgh, Scotland, were, the on, were only entitled to 1,900 acres of land, right? Now, they would have picked out 1,900 acres of land because they sold the rest over there with their part of the contract that I'm going to investigate. What was the deal? They still have this country, they still own it. They still own it. If defaults, if it's crookery going on, which I'm saying, it's all fraudulent, then we seize the land back. We have the right to seize it back. <coughs> because only sold on lease and occupation title leases and tenancy. The secret history of this abortive Manukau settlement, right? Abortive Manukau settlement. There, abortive, you see those words? I've marked them. The secret history. The secret history. I'm telling you the secret history right in front of your noses right now, all you Maoris. It's a big secret about this Manukau company that you don't know stuff all about that I'm telling you right now you're in trouble with me and the Paramount Chiefs because they have the original surnames stuck to this Manukau company that has the right to seize all the lands back into this Manukau company and Moai Crown, King William IV Trust. The secret history of this abortive Manukau settlement is, it's getting thicker, worthy of record. I'm putting it on the record. This is a citation, fact, evidence, on this YouTube video, admissible in the High Court of Admiralty in London, Westminster Magistrate Court <coughs> in Paddington, Westminster City, London, at dinner given by Lord Durham of the New Zealand Association when most of the arrangements for the sending out immigrants were complete, his Lordship proposed the health of Major Campbell as the Governor of the First Settlement. Campbell's supposed to be in the Governor. Edward Wakefield, who was present and secretly anxious to obtain this of Wakefield wanted to be the governor of New Zealand, objected to Major Campbell's appointment, not directly but in a cunning way. He cunning. He was this New South Wales he was running the New South Wales and New Zealand Company that set up and changed the name to the Waitamara Comp um, Manukau Company. But in a cunning way, so particularly characteristic of himself. A meeting of the influential members was in a few days convened at which circumstances occurred which led to <coughs> the breaking up of the association. Mr Wakefield's party then formed the New Zealand Company 
and Major Campbell's attempt, attempted to found a settlement in Manukau. Right? They hijacked Campbell and uh, William Simons, Cornwallis Simons' title. He mysteriously drowned in the Manukau Harbour. Now, that tells you something. There's something wicked went on with this Wakefield party that murdered him. And the News and Company, we're holding them to account for that. Alfred, your company, we're holding you to account for this murder of this Simons, uh, Captain William Simons, uh, William Cornwallis Simons that founded Auckland with the Manukau title. He bought the Manukau title over and you hijacked it. You people hijacked it. The directors of News and Company, encouraged by the eagerness with which land was purchased in England, purchased in England, there we go, purchased in England, because he had the seller there, Tira Waikato Farahere here in Manukau, <coughs> England, at the Wellington and New Plymouth settlements. You see, they were selling the land in Wellington and New Plymouth, issued prospectus in 1841 for the formation of another settlement to be called Nelson. You see? So now things were becoming legal in 1840 when they had sorted out these titles from the one in Britain, the Manukau title, here on the Manukau land. And that's where it went wrong. That's why Mohi Manukau and I have been trying to get his name on their titles and they refuse to put it on. Now we're going to flick them off. We're going to boot them off. That land in Cook Street. And put the Manukau name back on the titles. Straight to Britain. And seize the whole lot with the British title. That's what we're going to do. One chief said, We welcome the white men, but decline their presence. They didn't want your presence because it was <coughs> corrupted. Lord John Russell, that's up north foreseeing danger from this source, transmitted with the other charter of the colony a highly philosophical philosophical dispatch relative to the management of the natives. You see, I've marked these all out. I've marked a lot of documents out in the time I was with uh, Mohi Manika, but I'm pulling them out now. The one Wanganui settlers fared no better than those in Wellington. Wellington, I got a call. On arrival at Wanganui, they took possession of the land pointed out as they're owned by the company's agent, but the natives warned them off and announced that they were ready to fight for their inherited possessions. There we go, the inherited possessions. Those are our lands. These are our lands that John Key has fobbed off to the bankers. Both races were enraged at the removal of the seat of government from Russell. When, when they blew up Russell and brought the government to Auckland, Pomeroy complained that the circum so the customs duties had driven most of the whale ships from the Bay of Islands. <coughs> 30 in 1842, when these murmurs were deep, not allowed, the government house at Russell was burnt to the ground and the settlers insinuated that the place was fired by discontented New Zealanders. No, the thing was, they had rescinded all those titles they had seized all the titles and put them into the Manukau title in Auckland. And then they hijacked the Manukau title from Edinburgh. Okay, that's the issues I have with that title. I'm, I'm there for the Manukau title. The New Plymouth settlers were suffered from their ill-judged location and complicated causes led to this result. Taranaki well inhabited in 1820. Look, Taranaki, 32, well inhabited in 1820. See, that's Te Waikato had the titles running from Britain then. So the British were selling the land straight from Britain in 1820 until the flag went up. <coughs> so they were legally selling land straight from Britain. Part of the proprietors were fugitives in Cook's Strait. Part were slaves. Slaves amongst. So, uh, 17, 1769, see, 1769, Captain Cook had founded uh, New Zealand and they were starting to sell land on that basis from Captain Cook's title. That's Bundy and his Cook Island and my Cook Island family. Native disputes. Governor Hobson bought for £400 the right to Te Whero Whero held over Taranaki in virtue of conquest and a connection of that chief told the police magistrate at Mount New Plymouth that these complaining slaves and returned fugitives had no legal claim on the land. 
that Te Whiro Whiro was the true landlord of the soil and that this right he had sold to the Queen. Acted on opinion, the magistrate sanctioned Mr Cook, swearing in 28 special constables who, after arming himself, drove off a party of natives cultivating their land near the Waitara River. They had, the thing was this, <coughs> the British had already got the Manukau title and they weren't worried about anybody else that was Maori. Maori, it wasn't their land and that was the end of that. There. Land belonged to Moriori. I'll put that there. See in the capitals? Moriori, Manukau, Magistrate Court. There. Magistrate Court in um, Edinburgh, Scotland. Now, I'll, I'll change it. Put, um, oh, Magistrate. Hey. Magistrate. 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 No, I just corrected that all. So there we go. Native disputes at Nelson. Okay, we'll carry on. A bench of magistrates. Bench is bank. Bench of magistrates discharged the man and form, informed Mr. Wickstead that he was acting illegally. So this is the bench magistrate. The magistrate again. The man himself is a magistrate. <coughs> live, live. So we're getting near the end now. So um, that's all I wanted to really show you. Um, um, why I'm going up north is this, just that, the Manukau Company's title to New Zealand. Okay, this account was given to me by a Manukau settler, a gentleman who was examined before the House of Commons in 1844. Right, I'll put that in big because that's part of this um, uh, list of things here. Um, a, a Manukau, that's probably Mohi Manukau. This account was given to me by a Manukau settler, oh that's a settler, from Manukau Heads, a gentleman who was examined before the House of Commons in 1844, that's a Pākehā, Pākehā. Okay, so that's, that's the end of that, I'll just go back to my website and have a little jingle there, of what's going on. <coughs> so there's New Zealand Parliament, eight, eight, 800th anniversary of the Mag Magna Carta, they're trying to bring that in, into their um, the um, counteraction, counteraction against me isn't the proof. Or a check on this. Oh, yeah, no. um. oh right. Um, so here are all the videos that I have people watching now. Magna Carta law. New Zealand can't crown can't use Magna Carta law to refute the Maui King William IV 1834 flag, this, this flag here. They can't refute it, they can't counterclaim, they can't do anything with it because that's the title to this country <coughs> and the Pacific and the whole world. Um, Paramount Chief Bundy Waitai called to confirm Hui on the 30th of June 2017. He's got to have one before that. I asked him to have one probably a day before so that we can go to Titi Marae with Kingi and seize his land and kick the trustees, trust landowners off. They are not real landowners. They are only there, and I want to stick this to them because their titles are fraud and their names are fraud. Okay, King William IV of Orange created the birth certificate bonds. That's our Tiki Tiki Church, St. Mary's Church. I mentioned it in those documents. The, the, um, uh, bond, <clears throat> the bond, that's the bond for the stock market, is our birth certificates, was born out of that. The agent called me about buying insurance, ACC tax. King Itoto chat, there's 38 videos altogether, petition, Ernest Augustus, fifth to the throne, UK media, 38 degrees, and that's what I'm doing at the moment, is petitioning this flag to the throne with King Ernest Augustus to take up, that's his ancestor's flag, and that's his bloodlines. Okay, he's the bloodlines all the way back to William the Conqueror and King Solomon and his gold mines. All native land titles, birth certificate, bonds, legal, money, instruments registered in Scotland. That's, I just went over that. These are telling you how it's done. Okay, I'm doing these videos to teach you something on how it's done so that the whole world will get in behind the Moai 
and the Tidal Energy Projects and the Moai Powerhouse Group, Limited Limited Company, for share shares in this company to seize all these properties back and you be part of it with a mobile phone number and seize it. £25 uh, a share for life and that's all you need to contribute and that's it. That's as simple as it gets with this title and everything we seize back you get back minus the administrative costs. <clears throat> Part two, full, full length, two ways, oh, that's me swimming. I'll be going up to the gym shortly and do some more swimming. Mohini, Parapara, Manukau, Wānau Native Land Titles, Edinburgh, Edinburgh, Magistrate Court, Scotland. There we go, I'm talking about that bit. The Maui House Powerhouse Group, oh, that's one that's really good one, that one. Raised a decoration of war flag, that's that one. 1834 flag in King William III World Court, Brussels, Westminster, Magistrate Court. Okay? <coughs> My powerhouse group, oh, one didn't go in, I made it again. Theresa May, Northern Ireland, DUP, Maori Crown. The DUP party and the Maori Crown goes together. I just mentioned that with the Northern Ireland being our ancestors over there. In uh, St. Patrick's uh, with eight point star on that flag. Okay, so that's the DUP party. You're looking at this video. That's your star on the flag. The rent chiefs to collect the rent and all the councils, the county courts, councils that collect the rent. That's your job. That's your star they put in there. The King William III created the Bank of uh, England and the pound note, and he created the St. Patrick's Church Order, that eight point star, to collect all the revenue of the King's conquered lands. And leases. <clears throat> okay, you got that? That's how that works. So it's your call in there with us, the Maui Crown, um, Sinn Féin or Jerry Adams. We're coming, and I'm coming with the Chiefs. Radio Wate Kingi Tauroa Hui with me on the 30th of June. That's at the radio station where he works. Top um, presenter on the Maui uh, um, radio station, Odahu Jim. Uh, King Ernest Augustus versus King of Britain, UK, Westminster. So I'm telling you how this all fits together. These are our citations for our claim that no one can contest. Not even Maori can contest everything I say on these videos. There is 1138, 1138 videos altogether on this YouTube. <clears throat> so that's a lot. There they are. They're all lined up. I'm going to put them on the 38 on, just 38 of them on Facebook, the main ones on my Facebook site, and you can see them there underneath this article I'm going to be putting on shortly. Okay? So that's our evidence, fact, um, citations, and videos are better than statements or documents because you can't alter them. It's me talking and it's me making the claims and it's you to deny it or refute it or counterclaim it. If you don't, it is the law. Okay, you get that? <clears throat> All you people, it's too late now. The time has passed and we're going ahead. We're going to seize Cook Street with this, all of this and those power round chiefs and everything I'm saying about this flag and our control over this land and its titles, where it came from, where it's going to from here on in. So with that, I'll put this over here and I'll talk to you front on now to finish it off. Um, <coughs> I've got a bit of coal now um, with a bit of a headache. Uh, so I'm just going to say it like this. All you Maoris up in Titi Marae and around the country watching these videos, you take notice that what I'm saying is the truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God. It is the truth that you can't say anything or stay silent or ignorant. It goes against you. It's the law. It becomes the law. It's law is made in that Titi Marae and the Waitangi Marae and in the paddock, in the tent. When it comes to the 28th of October, we're having the Hui in the paddock, in the tent. That's highest court in the world, in that tent. And I say that with all sincerity that the Paramount Chief signed the documents inside that tent on the 6th of February 2017 to open up the 
Te Ti Marae, Native Grand Jury Trial Magistrate Court and the Sheriff and the Paramount Chiefs. That's legal. That's going straight back into the Manukau Company and it's Te Rewakato Wharehere in Manukau, Moriori, land title that's all these lands in this country and the islands inside the Edinburgh Magistrate Court in Scotland. <coughs> Straight into Westminster, into Westminster uh, Magistrate Court we're going to, in Westminster City, in Paddington, London. I'll be stationed over there. <coughs> Bundy will be here on this end, <coughs> looking after the land titles. Money will be looking after the birth certificates, titles, and its bonds on the stock market until they're gone and put back into our, my Crown Bank, Powerhouse Bank, my Powerhouse Bank, and my Crown King William IV Trust. Okay, so those are the uh, <coughs> two Paramount Chiefs. Um, Bundy is looking at the 1834 flag and its jurisdiction of Admiralty Magistrate Court. Martial law, financial martial law to seize lands with the sheriffs back into the custody of the King's Bench Native Grand Jury Trial Magistrate Court here and I'll be in the Magistrate Court in Westminster, London, Britain, UK and also in the Edinburgh Magistrate Court. Under that Manukau company into the Moai Crown King William IV Trust Company. Private. There. Okay, that's going to seize the Queen Victoria Trust and all the commerce inside that Manukau company. As it was then, as it still is now, from those prices, we are bringing in the prices of today to match them against the pound note prices then to the pound note prices now of England, right over the world. And including this country, valued the whole, the whole lot up under that title. <coughs> right back to the 1831 birth certificate bond value on the stock market, William, King William III, the King William IV set up in New York and Washington DC set up by King George III, the father of King William IV and King George IV and King Ernest Augustus I. Now we have King Ernest Augustus V live at 63 years old as our reigning monarch sovereign partner, private contract, business partner with his ancestor King William the Third of Orange, <coughs> World Court in Brussels. The flag is going up there. That's our bank going there, the Maui Powerhouse Bank in the Netherlands. It's going to seize all the assets back into that World Court and this flag and the Maui Powerhouse Bank run by us, myself and our executive. Over there. Not here, over there. So Bundy, <coughs> you look after the land. Manahi looks after the birth certificates and the transactions in the Treasury of Britain as a JP, Justice of the Peace, magistrate there with me. And Bundy, magistrate here on that part of the titles with Hedewini Karaka or so on Karaka as signatory to the native courts on the British side with me on the other end of him over there with his Clark family over there in Westminster and Brussels. Okay, you get that? That's how it works. We've got the right men in the right places. All the rest, I'm afraid, have no title or jurisdiction over this land and the way we're presenting it at Waitangi on the 30th of June 2017 <coughs> with Kingi Taurua 
mere hora, Taurua, and Tiki Fai Harawera. Those three are running that hui. I'm going there to tell them who's who. And I've done it before there with the Utu Tonga title. I'm taking the Utu Tonga title to that land, the bear land that's going to be left with Kingi on it. The whole TV3 block, I know who's in there and who's not supposed to be there because I've been through it with the Utu Tonga and the Williams family. I'm there for the Williams family, by the way, in those TB3 blocks. It's their land, those families, according to what I'm seeing on the titles. <coughs> but I'm going back to the Utu Tonga title. Not so much the Williams, I'm talking about the indigenous surnames first. We're going back to the original surnames first and then work back from there. Otherwise you're jumping the gun. Otherwise you're jumping the gun because you have no rights to talk about this flag. It's not yours to talk about. It's the male line that sat on the tree, the Portugal tree at Tingali. Not woman. It's not a woman's game. This is a king's game. We're talking kings here. The ones that conquered the lands and let you stay on it. Occupied only with bits of paper. Okay? So, um, <coughs> to make the most of this video, um, we are going to have a meeting, hopefully, before that. So, they saved me two trips uh, to have a meeting with the Hokianga uh, Tomata Kobatua, because I just mentioned something about Hokianga, that was the New Zealand company that put that together. So, I'm going to address the problem of the New Zealand company versus the Manukau Company in Scotland. You see, the New Zealand Company had no right to sell that land because it never got sovereign authority from the King George III in England. Direct line. They went through Australia around the back door and they're still going around the back door now with Bill English, going around through America, through the islands, through Samoa and back here, as if they owned the place. Not going to work, Bill English, you were watching this video. You know, fraud. Panama Papers is going to catch you out with these flags. It's going to catch you all out. You're going to have to pay back everything you stole, including this land. It's going back to its rightful owners and all the other immigrants who joined this side in this King William IV Maui Crown Trust. Take it off this trust, Queen Victoria Trust, back onto this side. Your Queen Victoria Trust is corrupted by the Rothschild family and the church and state. The Pope and the Rothschild banks, the IMF, World Court, World, World Bank <coughs> and NATO, United Nations and the Mafia, Israel and America, US federal state, government, abhorrent to this flag. They are abusing our flag of a king. You ain't no king. We are the paramount kings. The paramount here and the paramount in Canada. <coughs> I'm saying um, Raymond Faithful and Harry, the chiefs of Canada, take note. I'm coming there to fix that lot up after we fix this lot up. Once we take one land, it equals the whole lot in the whole world. Because this is the blueprint for all the native countries in the world from 1820 to 1834. Cut off right there. Top. 1820 to 1834, the commerce was set up with those kings that I mentioned. <coughs> set up the Bank of England, King William III, and the pound note. Gave us the instruments and the flag. Sail around the world, free passage through the world, anywhere, without hindrance, with the protection of the British military and navy, the magistrate of the navy. That's what it is. The magistrate of the navy is the captain or the surrogate king speaking <coughs> as his partner, higher than anybody else. It's not a contract partner. In a private contract, that no one can inquire into what I say or do with these paramount chiefs. You can't say anything, Alfred. 
because you're not in it, you're the one that sold it. Your ancestors in Sydney sold his lands without authority. And every other person gets the bill. If you're, you're on this side, you're on the left hand, hand side, you're not on this 1834 side, you can't be because your surname belongs there. You're not a chief or a paramount or an agent of the British Crown. You're an Australian immigrant with your ancestors from Australia that sold the land here without looking at it. Hmm? He said that on these documents I just quoted, cited. I cited those documents online. Okay, everything on these videos is cited. I'm citing what I'm saying. I'm saying it straight to your face, straight to every other Maori in this country that has a name that sounds like Maori, but it's not true. It's not true. <coughs> Thomas Walker, Nene. Where the hell did that come in? See, that's Waka Nene. That's your ancestor, Hara, 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 Hara Kahi. That's your ancestor, Tamati Walker, Nene. How, how deceptive is that? You'll have to explain that. You'll have to come clean, Kahi and Hone Harawera. Hone don't like talking to me. They all don't like talking to me. Titifai used to talk to me, but then backfired when I'm standing with Mohi Manaka, rattling things off. See, they backfired. They're, no one wants to talk to me in their family. Even Ty looks at me with his beady eyes as if he's an alien. As if to say, you can't say anything. I'm saying everything now, Ty. You can shut your mouth, sit in the corner and watch because you have no title. Big mouth. That's all. The law will get you with this leg. Right? If you use it, you know what it's for. It's a legal instrument that'll kill you. Get in the road. Kill you. I'm saying this because I'm passionate about this flag. I spent over 20 years with it, with Mohi Manukau and Kingi Toto. I've been in it for the long haul. It's taken this long, many hours like now, of dedication to see it through, to get the land back. You stole. Your ancestors stole. Don't get me wrong. I'm right. I'm saying it like it is. And that's how all this pain in this country came from your ancestors. Not mine. Your ancestors. My ancestors are in Tiki Tiki in the church. They went along with the British and signed the bond birth certificate that was already over there. <coughs> with Te Rawakato Whareheri in 1820. You see, we knew what was going on because the Rogans married our families, the judges in the courts, magistrate, court in Helensville, Rogan, John Rogan, and Mariah Manukau. The Manukau family didn't know all of this because Mohi didn't tell them. He was sworn into secrecy. Not to say anything, but he took me along with him, right around the country, in my little car, <coughs> to go and show me everything. I've got it on film. I've got it on his voice, talking, even in Rafiti, up on the hill, where his ancestor is Rewharewa, Manukau, buried near the gate. That's his, that's his ancestor. It's not Rewa or somebody else, it's Rewharewa, up there, because that was the land he was selling. He had the right, the legal right to sell it, and Auckland. He had the legal right to sell the land with Pomare. Right? <coughs> Those two went together. In selling land, they had the legal right to sell. Legal right to sell the land. That's why I have no issues with Pomare. Right? There. That said, I can now get on with it. And get my head back in it and go and have a swim and go to the gym. So, that's all for now. We'll catch you later. Bye.